your kidneys are incredible organs. Inside each of them are up to 1.2 million nephrons, the tiny yet powerful structures that filter waste and excess fluids from your blood. Think of nephrons as the building blocks of kidney function. But here's the thing, kidney damage often happens not because each nephron fails individually, but because the total number of working nephrons decreases over time. When enough of them stop functioning, the kidneys can no longer keep up, and that's when problems arise. One of the most important measures of kidney health is the glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. This number tells us how effectively your kidneys are filtering waste and excess fluids. It's a key indicator used to monitor kidney function and assess the severity of kidney damage. To evaluate kidney health, doctors rely on a variety of tests, including urine reagent strip tests. Measurements of serum creatinine and urea levels. Assessing proteinuria, or excess protein in the urine, and albuminuria, which is excess albumin in the urine. And testing the kidney's maximum concentrating capacity. We will go through each one of them. Classification systems for kidney diseases, like chronic kidney disease, CKD, and acute kidney injury, AKI, are based on these test results. They use markers such as GFR, proteinuria, and serum creatinine levels to guide diagnosis and treatment. Quick pause before we dive in, did you know that 78% of you watching right now haven't subscribed to our channel? That's right, and we need your support. If you find this content valuable, hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. It helps us reach more medical laboratory students and spread this important knowledge. Let's aim for 100% of you liking this video, it'll make a huge difference. Alright, now let's get started with one of the most common and essential tests in kidney function evaluation, urine analysis. When doctors suspect kidney function issues, urine analysis is often the first test performed. It provides critical clues about kidney health, starting with a simple examination of the urine's appearance. Let's look at what urine's appearance can tell us. Color, normal urine is pale straw-colored. Darker urine may indicate higher concentration or the presence of pigments, while unusual colors like pink, red, or brown could point to hemoglobin or myoglobin. Turbidity, cloudy urine might suggest an infection, fat particles in nephrotic syndrome, or, in rare cases, chyluria. Foaming, if urine foams excessively when shaken, it could signal proteinuria, or excess protein in the urine. Unusual colors, rare conditions, such as black urine in alcaptanuria or certain medications, can cause unique color changes. One of the most common methods for assessing urine is reagent strip testing, also known as dipstick testing. These strips are coated with reagents specific to different analytes and can test for single or multiple substances at once. Dipsticks can detect signs of systemic changes or kidney-related issues, such as glucose, ketones, bilirubin diglucuronate, and urobilinogen, indicating systemic health problems. Kidney-related markers like protein, albumin, pH, nitrite, specific gravity, and hemoglobin. To ensure accurate results. Fresh samples should be collected in sterile containers and tested immediately, unless delayed testing has been validated. Reagent strips must be stored properly in desiccated conditions to avoid deterioration. Timing is critical. Each analyte reacts at a specific rate, anywhere from 30 seconds to 2 minutes, so strict adherence to the manufacturer's guidelines is essential. Color charts differ between manufacturers, making cross-comparisons tricky. To minimize variability and improve precision, automated devices are often used. These advanced systems offer features like cell and particle counting using techniques like flow cytometry, automated microscopy, and protein-to-creatinine ratio calculations. Results from automated systems are presented on a continuous scale, providing more accuracy compared to manual readings. Total protein. Proteinuria, or the presence of excess protein in urine, is one of the most critical indicators of kidney disease. It's more than just a marker, higher concentrations are linked to a worse prognosis. While not all chronic kidney disease, CKD, 
patients have proteinuria, it's a common finding in CKD and related conditions. To detect proteinuria, testing is essential. The reagent strip assay is often the first step, providing a quick and easy way to screen for kidney disease. Patients with risk factors like reflux nephropathy, early glomerulonephritis, hypertension, or hematuria should undergo annual screening to monitor their kidney health. Interestingly, proteinuria and hematuria are sometimes detected incidentally during routine multi-test screenings. But like any test, reagent strips have their limitations. They're not ideal for general population screening and may miss chronic kidney disease in diabetic patients where urinary albumin measurements are preferred. In fact, there's growing consensus that reagent strip tests may not be reliable in certain clinical contexts. Here's how reagent strips work, the test pad contains tetrabromphenol blue and a citrate buffer at a pH of 3. When proteins are present, the pad changes color, shifting from yellow to green, thanks to the protein error of indicators principle. These strips can detect protein levels between 150 to 300 mg per liter, but they're primarily sensitive to albumin and less effective for other proteins like globulins, Bentz-Jones protein, mucoproteins, or hemoglobin. To improve accuracy, some strips include a creatinine test pad, allowing for the calculation of the protein-to-creatinine ratio, PCR. Automated systems, such as the Multistix Pro 10 LS paired with the Clinitech Status Strip Reader, reduce variability and can effectively rule out significant proteinuria, defined as more than 0.3 grams per day. Albumin Albumin testing plays a critical role in detecting early kidney disease by identifying low concentrations of albumin in urine, levels as low as 20 to 200 mg per liter. There are two main methods for albumin testing. 1. Colorimetric methods. These use a chemical reaction at a specific pH to detect albumin. An example is the Clinitech microalbumin reagent strip, which provides semi-quantitative albumin and albumin to creatinine ratio (ACR) results when analyzed on a Clinitech status device. 2. Immunological methods. These are highly specific like the micro-reagent strip from Roche Diagnostics, which visually displays albumin levels. For fully quantitative ACR results, point-of-care devices like the DCA Vantage and Affinion go beyond reagent strips. They deliver accurate results across various clinical settings and offer excellent diagnostic performance. But not all methods are equally sensitive. Semi-quantitative devices like Clinitech fall short of the 95% sensitivity threshold recommended by organizations like the American Diabetes Association. Fully quantitative devices, however, meet this standard, making them more reliable for detecting albuminuria. Next, let's look at hemoglobin testing, which helps identify causes of blood in urine, or hematuria. This condition can stem from tubulointerstitial or post-renal diseases, intravascular hemolysis, or bleeding in the urinary tract. Hemoglobin in urine can be detected using one. Microscopic examination, this involves identifying red blood cells in urine sediment using phase contrast microscopy. 2. Reagent strip testing, these strips detect hemoglobin based on its peroxidase activity. The reaction causes a color change from orange to dark green, indicating the presence of hemoglobin, myoglobin, or red cells. Interpreting reagent strip results is straightforward. A speckled pattern suggests intact red cells, indicating bleeding in the urinary tract. A solid color points to hemolyzed red cells or free hemoglobin. While the test can detect both hemoglobin and myoglobin, it cannot distinguish between them. However, a negative result effectively rules out myoglobinuria. The test is sensitive to 150 to 600 micrograms per liter of free hemoglobin or 5 to 20 red cells per microliter. False positives can occur if water, rather than urine, is used as a negative control due to differences in test matrix requirements. Clinically, hematuria may indicate Kidney conditions like glomerulonephritis, polycystic kidney disease, sickle cell disease, or vasculitis. Urologic issues such as bladder or prostate cancers, kidney stones, 
or trauma. Persistent hematuria is a potential marker for chronic kidney disease, CKD. Now let's jump to glucose in urine. Normally, the kidneys reabsorb all glucose from the blood, but when blood glucose levels exceed the kidney's resorptive capacity, typically around 180 mg per deciliter, 10 millimoles per liter, glucose begins to appear in the urine. A positive glucose test in urine indicates hyperglycemia at the time the urine was produced, which may support a diagnosis of diabetes mellitus. However, it's important to note that urine glucose testing is not part of the diagnostic criteria for diabetes and cannot estimate plasma glucose levels accurately due to variability in kidney function. The reagent pad for glucose testing contains glucose oxidase, peroxidase, potassium iodide, and a blue dye. Here's how it works. 1. Glucose reacts with glucose oxidase to produce hydrogen peroxide. 2. Peroxidase oxidizes potassium iodide, releasing iodine. 3. The iodine reacts with the dye, producing a color change from green to dark brown, depending on the glucose concentration. This method detects glucose levels ranging from 72 to 127 mg per deciliter, 4 to 7 millimoles per liter, and can identify concentrations up to 2018 mg per deciliter, 111 millimoles per liter. Now let's talk about leukocytes and nitrite in urine, two important indicators of urinary tract infections, UTIs. Leukocyte esterase detects the presence of white blood cells in the urine, or pyuria, which is defined as 10 or more leukocytes per milliliter. Nitrite testing identifies bacteria that convert nitrate to nitrite, a hallmark of bacterial infections. Let's break down the testing methods. 1. Leukocyte test. The reagent pad contains a buffered mix of derivatized pyrrole amino acid ester and diazonium salt. Leukocyte esterases hydrolyzed the ester, releasing 3-hydroxy-5-phenylpyrrole, which reacts with diazonium salt to produce a purple color. It can detect 5 to 15 cells per microliter, with the darkest color indicating 500 cells per microliter or more. 2. Nitrite test. The pad uses p-arsenilic acid and tetrahydrobenzo, H, quinolin, 3, ol. Nitrite converts arsenilic acid into a diazonium salt, which couples with quinolol to produce a pink color. This test detects bacterial populations of 100,000 per milliliter or more, with sensitivity to nitrite levels between 61 to 103 micrograms per deciliter, 13 to 22 micromole per liter. The combination of leukocyte and nitrite tests is highly effective for diagnosing UTIs. If both are absent, it helps rule out infection, reducing unnecessary lab tests. However, there are limitations. Nitrite testing may be less reliable in children, high-specific gravity urine, or when ascorbic acid levels exceed 25 mg per deciliter. Leukocyte testing can be influenced by glucose levels, specific gravity, or certain antibiotics, like cephalothin or tetracycline. Specific gravity, a quick and easy test that measures the concentration of urine. It provides valuable insight into hydration status and correlates closely with urine osmolality. The reagent pad is composed of bromthamol blue, polymethylvanyl ether, and other agents. Here's how it works. The pad's pretreated polyelectrolyte releases hydrogen ions based on urine's ionic strength. A pH indicator detects these ions, causing a color shift from dark blue, 1.000, to yellow-green, 1.030. While reagent strips are convenient, they have their challenges. Laboratory analyzers provide highly accurate results by directly measuring osmolality, while strips show limited correlation. Factors like glucose, protein, or radiopaque compounds from imaging procedures can artificially elevate specific gravity readings. To assess urine concentration with precision, osmolality measurement is preferred over specific gravity. Next, let's look at pH testing, which evaluates urine acidity. It's especially helpful for diagnosing renal tubular acidosis or assessing the risk of kidney stone formation. pH test pads use indicators like methyl red and bromthamol blue. 
methyl red turns red below pH 4.2 and yellow above pH 6.2. Bronthamol blue changes from yellow below pH 6.0 to blue above pH 7.6. Intermediate values create shades of orange and green, covering a scale from pH 5.0 to 8.5. One key limitation. pH values can shift after collection, so it's essential to follow strict testing procedures for accurate results. Finally, let's explore microscopic examination, a critical step for identifying cells, casts, and other particles in urine sediment. It offers direct insights into kidney and urinary tract health. Fresh urine is centrifuged, and the sediment is examined under a microscope. Here's what we often find. Cells. Red blood cells, RBCs normal in small amounts, elevated levels indicate hematuria, often linked to glomerular disease. White blood cells, WBCs suggest inflammation or infection. Kidney and urinary tract cells, present naturally in low numbers. Casts, formed from tamhorseful glycoprotein, their type reveals specific conditions. RBC casts, glomerular disease. WBC casts, tubular inflammation. Casts are absent in lower urinary tract inflammation. Other particles, like fat or pigments, may also be observed. Together, these findings help distinguish between upper and lower urinary tract conditions. Upper tract inflammation features WBCs and casts. Lower tract inflammation shows WBCs but no casts. In conditions like acute glomerulonephritis, urine may appear discolored due to hematuria, with large numbers of RBCs, WBCs, and casts in the early stages. These findings decrease as the disease progresses. And that's all for today. Don't miss our upcoming video, Quantitative Assessment of Proteinuria, Total Protein and Albumin. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it with friends or colleagues who might benefit. Your support helps us create more valuable content for the medical community. Until next time, take care and stay curious. Bye.